Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Thank you so very much for joining the Life Signatures Radio. I don't know where it is you're listening from. Maybe you're listening from Africa or from Asia or from Europe or from the United States of America, from Australia. I see my statistics, my dashboard shows people around the world listening to us from all those places. So thank you so very much and welcome to another episode. It's a daily show, this one, where we talk about purpose, productivity and resilience. We are in now in the middle of a series. We're talking about work. I thought it was going to be a small series, but it's long. I dare say it's going to be like 30 episodes because I do believe, my friends, work is the reason we exist. There is no other reason. Now, a Christian might say, ah, we exist so that we can worship God and all that stuff. No. Worshiping God is a given. It's a given. It's not even supposed to be an instruction. It's a given. But work is the instruction. Work is the command. We are here for the sake of work. So we're going to go deeper into this and learn. We've been talking about the ways, different ways in which work is exemplified. And we've said four of them. Now we're going to go to the fifth today. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Yes, so let us just do a recap here, ladies and gentlemen. What is work? I mean, how uh, how is work exemplified? Number one, it is through creation. I, I, I want to do it again. I want to talk again. I want to go into it again, but I already did. So go back and listen. Two, work is exemplified through increase and growth. If there is no growth, there is no increase. The work that you're doing, you're going to give up on it. Three, work is exemplified through going global. It moves from where you are and it touches outside of your region. It does that organically or through you intentionally pushing it. Thirdly, fourthly, work is exemplified through ruling. We said it is exemplified through ruling, especially if you're doing your work. And we went deeper into this by saying that the rulership you see these days, forms of governance that you see these days, were not necessarily supposed to be there. They are there for the most part because most people are not ruling through their work. That's why we have democracy. People think that eh, if I vote in my tribes met, then food will be on my table. You are not ruling that way you're being ruled over no wonder we have these cycles of elections and we spend a lot of dollars every year in africa you know dollars are lost in the so-called whitewashed tomb democracy there's no democracy in there it's not a democracy if you're going to bribe people so they can vote for you it's not a democracy if the people that are supposed to vote for you have no clue they don't have knowledge about macroeconomics they don't know nothing they're not even ruling in themselves. They don't have jobs by the, themselves. They're not working. They don't, have, they don't have their lives work. Let me not uh, digress. The fifth way, let's talk about the fifth way today. The fifth way through which work is exemplified is dominion. I alluded to this yesterday. When we're talking about knowing your enemy. Dominion. Domination. Especially against your enemy. 
See, the word dominion is pretty interesting. It makes me excited. Very, very good word. It makes me excited to the core. So, one of the problems we have in life is whenever such a word is mentioned, do you know what? Individuals start counting themselves out. When you talk about dominion, individuals don't think themselves in the equation of dominion. It is almost, almost as if dominion was never meant to happen at the individual level. Another aspect of this misconception is that dominion has to be against, listen to this, another human being. Talked about this yesterday. Nothing can be farther from the truth. Let me say this. To have dominion simply means to be in charge. That's it. It means to be in charge or to be in control so much so that you're limiting anything and everything that can be against your mandate. That's dominion. It's a connotation of supremacy. Supremacy over a territory. So the territory for, let's say, Microsoft is productivity because of the dominion that they have in that particular arena. The territory for, uh, uh, what's another example? IBM, again, is productivity. The territory for Tesla is transportation. The territory for Apple is communication. Now, the question is, what is your territory? Your territory is going to be defined, we talked about this, it's going to be defined by your type of work, your life's work. So to have dominion simply means to be in charge or to be in control over that territory. It, having supremacy over that territory. And I know it's a mouthful, so let me just slow down a little bit and approach it from a different angle. Let's talk about work and dominion. Because that's, what, that's exactly what we're talking about. Work is exemplified through dominion. I can tell you this, that at the individual level, I want to hammer this home. At the individual level, there is an intention. There is an intention for you to have dominion at an individual level. Mark my words. At an individual level, there is an intention for you to have dominion and that is not a bad thing. The most profound thing, in fact, the most foolproof way of having dominion is through your work. I don't see any other way. It is through your work. Through your work, you have dominion. Unquestionable dominion. Legacy giving dominion. I mean, kind of like eternal dominion, if, if I might add. So listen to this. There is no way you're going to have dominion when the work you're doing is not your work, your work, your life's work. Yeah, let that sink in. In other words, you were never meant to do every kind of work, any kind of work. You are meant to do your work, intended before you were even born to do your work that's why you have that personality that's why you have those strengths that's why you have those unique talents that's why you have that gift that's why you have that passion it is directed to your work and when you find yourself at it that's where domination comes in dominion comes in there is only one type of work that has dominion you're meant to do and when you're about it when you're about your life's work dominion is happening right then and there I want to close this but I want to make sure that we understand one thing dominion 
is at an individual level. Of course, you will grow that dominion and you find that you've formed an organization, but still, I dare you that make sure even those ones who are working under you or for you or with you, which we're going to talk about tomorrow, they also are having dominion. If you find that you're a boss ruling over them, they are not having autonomous dominion in the work that they are doing, but they are only having, dom they, they, I mean, you're the only one who's having dominion over them. You've lost the plot. We normally are told, and there's this quote that goes around, that people don't leave toxic environments. People leave bad managers. Because it's bad managers, bad leaders, and I don't know why bad leaders is a negative oxymoron. You can't be a leader and then you're bad at the same time. At the same, that's why we've, we've lost plot of the definition of leadership. Leadership should never have a negative connotation at all. At all. But people leave you because you've not allowed them to have dominion in the work that they're doing with you. So you're a boss, not a leader. A good leader you should not, not even say good a leader should be a guy who empowers others to continue to have dominion in the things that they are doing so you're not micromanaging you're not uh, pouring things into them and they're not thinking for themselves not reasoning for themselves you're not allowing them to question you you're not allowing them to recommend things that they can uh, things where things can be done better allow people steve jobs said it best he said we don't hire people smart people so that we can tell them what to do we hire smart people so they can tell us what to do that's leadership that's allowing people to have dominion see if employees are not telling you what to do you know what you've not allowed them to have dominion so why did you hire them in the first place you hired robots zombies you're not allowing them to grow. So work is exemplifying, it's exemplified through people having dominion at individual levels. I think I've insisted enough. At an individual level. I want you to take a look at your at your work right now. That work that you're doing, do you have dominion? In that you're having supremacy and control are you making decisions are you creating are you making recommendations where you are not the one in authority to pull the plug and to activate things are you making recommendations are you free thinking do you have a free reign are you dominating are you ruling over the enemy or the problems that you're facing at that particular place of work if you're not, then you're not having dominion. And soon enough, let me say this emphatically, soon enough, in every place where we're not having dominion, we will lose the position. Tomorrow, we'll continue talking about these things, but until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.